Good evening, everyone. Hey, I'm J.C. Molinax, one of the administrators here at Brothers and Sisters in Christ. I uh, would like for you uh, to continue coming up and just participating with us. Thank you for coming and being a part of it. And uh, thank you for giving me a few moments of your time. Uh, back a few weeks ago, uh, we started a study in Romans chapter 5, okay? Uh, in that study, we were in verse 1. We've been camped out in verse 1 of chapter 5 for a good long while through the whole month of October. Uh, and we started, uh, got into the verse and got to the third word, justification. And I thought it would be appropriate for us to move on from there uh, and go through the three parts of salvation, knowing that we we're going to be studying justification. All right, those three parts that we studied were justification, sanctification, and glorification. Justification means being made righteous. That is, you're fully saved. When you place your trust in Jesus at that moment, you're justified. Then we move into the sanctification, which means being set apart or being saved or your walk with the Lord. Okay, the day that you receive uh, Christ, the day you place your trust in what Jesus did for you on the cross is the moment that you're going to start being sanctified. And that moves all the way into the very last breath that you take. And you're taken out of this sinful body, out of this sinful world. And you're moved into a, uh, uh, an eternal body, okay? A glorified body with the Lord Jesus and you live forever. And that brings us to our third part, which is glorification on the third part of our salvation. Now, you can go back two weeks from today and go back, okay? And check out that video. And that goes in depth uh, with the three parts of salvation. Now, uh, as advertised, uh, we're going to be moving in uh, through Romans 5. We're going to go through the verse 10 verses. But don't get too excited because verse 10 is going to take us right back to verse 1 to where we're going to be at today. Okay, so we're going to be discussing the six articles of salvation, things that we get when we get saved, okay? And I've got them here in front of me. So now listen, I'm using the tablet, okay? So I'm going to have to be swapping in between screens. Uh, throughout this message, there may be a, an awkward moment of pause here and there. Just uh, forgive me for that. Be praying for me uh, as the Lord speaks in and through me, okay? Before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. All right, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for the message we're about to receive. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that uh, none of these words or none of these sentences or any phrases come out of my mouth that you don't want it to come out, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll just take over my tongue, Lord, and uh, speak the truth in and through me. I'm coming to you completely surrendered, Heavenly Father, to be used by you. I pray that the message resonates with everyone who's listening today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that if there's anyone that's struggling uh, with being at war with you that has no peace, Almighty Father, Lord, that they'll uh, get it right today with you, Almighty Father. And, Lord, I just pray, Lord, if there's anyone listening that's lost, uh, that's not placed your trust in you, Heavenly Father, uh, that you will uh, just knock on their heart and just continue drawing them to you, Almighty Father. And I pray, Lord, that they'll get saved. Lord, we love you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, just as we advertised here the other day, we're going to go ahead and go through our six articles of salvation. Uh, we're going to be on the first one, which is peace with God. But what I want to do, I kind of want to go through these six with you real quick to kind of give you a, a glimpse of what we're looking at. Uh, they have been posted on Facebook on the Romans 5 study, uh, and they are three questions on there that I would, if you're participating, I would like for you to answer and try to get into some discussion, okay? Just know there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer. The only answer is, the only wrong answer is the one you don't give, okay? So uh, go in there and answer those, have fun with it, don't worry about people beating you up or anything. Uh, here at Brothers and Sisters, we all love one another. Uh, we all want to see everyone succeed. So just get in there and, and just uh, participate best you can, okay? Now, <clears throat> these are the six articles and the guarantee of our eternal salvation, okay? So we need to learn them well. So we're going to be looking at these to see what the Lord says here in Romans 1 through 10. Um, these are the six articles in of guarantee. Uh, I just read that, didn't I? Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, these six articles are peace with God, which we're going to be on today. We're going to look into that and dissect that. Standing in grace, which that's my favorite. Uh, now, we may expand on that one. That may be a two or even three-part series. Uh, there is so much to grace. You've got common grace. 
and we've got saving grace. And we're going to have to define those two to be able to understand what uh, the standing in grace means. Uh, and I'm excited about that. I'm really excited. Uh, number three is hope and glory. Four is assurance of love. Five is certainty of deliverance. And this, number six is joy in God, right? Uh, it's all about that joy, about being saved and having that, that joyful relationship. We're going to get into that pretty deep too. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to Romans 5. Uh, and we're going to start out in verse 1, okay? And uh, I'm reading for the King James Bible here. So if y'all guys will just follow along with me. And then we're going to go on and read through verse 10 and come back to verse 1 and get into the text for this evening. All right, starting with one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, patient experience, and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us for when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly for scarcely a righteous man would one die yet preadventure for a good man even one would die but God commanded his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. And here we go. It's getting good. We shall be saved from wrath through him. This is it. 10. For if we were enemies. Did y'all get that? We were enemies. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We were enemies. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Okay, we're going to be looking at uh, the Christian who is not at war with God anymore due to their justification, their salvation. You know, there's something that people don't really know. When we look at the word peace, okay, we look at it maybe as a feeling. Hey, I'm at peace. I feel at peace. Uh, I, I'm okay with the way things are going, but that's not, the, that's not what we're looking at here is peace. We're looking at more of a direct, uh, uh, more of a reality of a peace. Did you know that Christians, I'm sorry, that lost people are at war with the Lord? There is a battle going on. Now, you lost man that you're listening today, you're listening to this for the first time, and you're saying, look, JC, brother, you, you, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. You're foolish. Uh, I'm not at war with the Lord. I stay away from uh, things. I live in my own life. I don't bother anybody. Uh, I do my own thing. I'm set apart that way. Well, now, the Bible tells us that we're at war with the Lord. And we're going to go into th uh, some of these scriptures here, uh, into the Old Testament, into the New Testament. Then we're going to bring it all together uh, by coming in through the book of Colossians uh, and setting up the stage to end this study for today. But uh, as we go in, go to my notes, okay, peace with the Lord, okay, peace with God. Not a, it's not a subjective or an internal sense of calm and sincerity, okay, but it's an external, objective reality. That's what it is. It is a reality. There is a war going on. You may not see it, but there is a war going on. It, when you're saved, your eyes are open. It's sad that a lot of Christians don't see this, okay? But there is a battle going on, a huge battle going on. It's a battle for souls. It's a battle for you, for, for you trying to rip you out of God's hands, trying to get you to, to live in sin and, and not be victorious, okay? So let's go in here as we look. Let's see what the Bible says about the non-believer being in uh, war with the Lord. So we read uh, 5.10, okay? That tells us that we were enemies with the Lord uh, at that time. Let's look at uh, Exodus 22.24 from the King James. Go to Exodus 22, verse 24. And my wrath shall wax hot. Okay, there's that word wrath, meaning there's something going on. 
okay? There's a war going on. And I will kill you with a sword. You have a sword in battle. And your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. See, that right there tells us that there's a war going on. God's wrath, his anger, his hatred has been kindled against the lost person, against the one that he has war with, okay? Let's go on to our next scripture. Our next scripture, we're going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 32. That is going to be 21 and 22 verse. That is going to be Deuteronomy 32 verses 21 and 22. Let's look at this. They have moved me to jealousy. Not God. They have provoked me to anger. There's that provoking to anger, okay? With their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. That's talking about the lost man. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Okay? If that doesn't right there speak of a battle or a war going on, nothing else does. Let's move on. Let's go on to our next scripture right here. That's going to go into Psalms 7. That is Psalms chapter 7, verse 11. Okay? Let's read. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. So there, we've got a separation. You've got the righteous, which are the ones who are saved, who have been justified, who are being sanctified, being saved, uh, their daily walk with the Lord. And then you've got the wicked. You've got the ones who are war with God. And you know, we mentioned earlier that there's just some people that don't realize that they're at war. They have no clue what's going on around them, okay? And for us as the Christian, it's our job. Uh, we've been commanded, okay? It's not that we've been asked, but we've been commanded to go in between the highways and the hedges and to be able to spread the good news to all who be willing to listen. And that's what we need to do. We need to share our faith. We need to let these people know that they're blind and they're walking toward a cliff. And there's all these warning signs. Right? And since they're blind, they can't see. So us who can see, what we want to do, we want to do the kind thing. We want to go over to that person. We want to say, look, I just want you to know that there's a cliff about 50 feet away and you're walking toward it. And there's clear signs. And I know that you're blind. I know that you can't see it. But I'm just giving you fair warning. If you fall off that cliff, you're going to die. And that's what we need to do as Christians. Okay? We need to Share our faith. We need to share with these people that they are war going on and that they are not at peace with the Lord. For them to receive that peace, for them to stop being at war with the Lord, they have to be saved. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next scripture. Uh, we're going to move into, uh, let's see, we're going to move into the New Testament. Move forth. We're going to be in John chapter 3, verse 36. Okay. Chapter 3 of John, verse 36, it reads, He that believeth on the Son, okay, he believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And that he that believeth not the Son does not have life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, there we go. We saw that in Exodus. We saw that uh, in Psalms. We're, we're seeing this all over the Old Testament, God's wrath. See, God loves everybody, but the point of it is that not everybody is saved and not everybody is going to be saved, but everybody is going to receive that conviction, that knock on the heart, right? As much as God uh, hates sin and much as we've alienated ourselves from him, God still loves us enough to forgive us, okay, and to pull us out of that war and bring us into peace. And Jesus does that with his works on the cross. See, when we're when we saved, we're buried. The old man is buried. And we're raised up in the newness of life. We're new creatures. We're raised up in Christ. Christ in us. We're now one with him. Uh, did y'all hear that bird in the background? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's that's basically what it is. Okay. Um, we're going to move back in to uh, the scriptures. Uh, we're actually going to move on into Ephesians 5, verse 6. Now, I'm just going to tell you right now, 
Uh, Ephesians is my absolute favorite book in the Bible. Uh, back last November and December and January, I went through a very extensive study in the book of Ephesians from 1 to verse 6. And we all know that chapter 6, okay, uh, is one of the most famous chapters in the Bible, the body of armor. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, uh, gird your belt with the, uh, with the truth, okay, the truth belt, uh, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, uh, and your sword, which is the word. And that's, that's, that's famous all the way through. Well, there's five other chapters in the book of Romans that uh, a lot of us seem to overlook. And uh, the Lord presents the gospel Paul, through Paul. Uh, the Lord through Paul presents the gospel in Ephesians 1 through 5, right? And he also does in Colossians and in Romans too, a very clear presentation, uh, presentation of the gospel. Now, if you're out witnessing and you're sharing your faith with people and you want to get to understand the gospel, uh, you want to know the, uh, the basics of it and dig into a little bit of the depths of it, Check those three books out, Colossians, Ephesians, and Romans. Very well presented. Um, let's go in here and let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, okay? Okay, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. There's two words, the, or a phrase, all right? The first word's uh, wrath, okay? The wrath of God and then the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience, that's the lost man. That is being at war with the Lord, all right? Wrath upon the Lord. Why is God angry with us? Because he's at war with us. When you're going to war with a country, if you're going to war with a group of people, whatever it may be, your anger is kindled, right? Uh, you, you dislike those people. You hate those people. You want those people to die. But see, that's the way the world looks at it. But God don't see it that way. Yes, you lost man's war with God. And yes, he hates your sin and what you're doing. But again, as we mentioned, he loves you enough to convict you, knock on that heart. Again, we talked about earlier, and give you an opportunity to not be with war with Jesus, with war with God anymore. All right? Um, now, we're going to move into, we're going to wrap this thing up. As we're seeing, we're going to look at now, we see the difference between uh, a lost man and a saved man, okay? We know that the lost man is at war with the Lord, uh, and we see that a Christian is at peace with the Lord. There is no war coming from him anymore, all right? There's peace in Jesus. Now, what we're going to look at in the book of Colossians chapter 3, we're going to look at what it looks like for a man not to be at war with the Lord, let me find my Colossians. Uh, I'm sorry, I said three. I meant chapter one. Okay, we're going to be in 21 and 22. That's, that's uh, not three, but uh, Colossians chapter one, verses 21 and 22. And you, okay, that's talking about us, the Christians, that were sometimes alienated in enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he hath reconciled. Through Jesus Christ, through his works, we have been reconciled, brought back to him the way it should have been in the first place. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and un unreprovable in his sight. That's what the whole name of the game is. That's where the rubber meets the road, is that that's the whole meaning of everything is for when Adam and Eve sinned, death came into the world. So the Lord had to reverse that. So Jesus came in the world, right? Became sin, who knew no sin, and died for all ungodly people. And that's what we're going to do. He's, they want us to remain blameless. The only way we can do that is not through our flesh or by our good works because we don't have that but it's by the good works of Christ on the cross. We're to made, become blameless uh, and made righteous before the Lord before we can enter into heaven and be in his presence, okay? Isn't that amazing? I don't know how that works uh, because of what Christ done that all men can go to heaven, okay? That's just so awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and move into our last scripture that we're going to go ahead and end this. Uh, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
18 through 20. Now this right here is good, and I love this. Okay? Chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians uh, 18 through 20. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself through Jesus. There we go, that reconciliation through Jesus on the cross. And hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors. We are to take this reconciliation. We are to take this justification, sanctification, and glorification message. We are to take these articles of salvation, this uh, uh, being at war with the Lord uh, that these people are, are in the middle of right now, these lost people. We are to take that to them and share with them the truth and share with them that they don't have to be at a war no more, that they can be at peace with the Lord. Uh, two, with that God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed us into the world of reconciliation. That first part of that verse we just read, isn't that awesome? That he's not counting our sins against us. Murders, lies, mischief, alcohol, sex, drugs, no matter what your sin is or was, God does not count that on your account. See, your account was wiped clean through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. See, the Bible tells us that he takes our sins and tosses it from the east to the west. Did you know that there is no end to the east? And there's no end to the west? There's nowhere to stop it. It's unlimited. Okay? That's awesome. He even goes even further. He says, I take your sins, and I take them to the far depths of the sea, and I bury them in Christ. No man, no man knows about it. God forgets about it. And your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'd like to thank everyone for, for listening to me, putting up with my spit and my stuttering. I uh, just want to say thank you for coming up and participating and listening. Now, I will say this, uh, going back to our study on uh, Facebook, it was posted, Roman 5 study. It was posted uh, Sunday evening, and uh, there's three things that I want you guys to do. First of all, I want you to read Romans 5 starting today, every day, all the way through November till December 1st, okay? And then we're going to move on to another chapter, Lord willing, by then. But what I want you to do is read Romans 5 every day, no matter if it's in the morning, in the evenings. Now, I know you've probably got your own Bible study. I know you've probably got your own devotions. That's okay. But for you to participate, I want you to read Romans 5 over and over and over again. After about the fifth or sixth day, it's going to sound very redundant and very boring. But I'm telling you, in, in my studies and in my walk with the Lord, reading the Scripture over and over and over again, it seems to help me. It brings forth memory, uh, Scripture memory. It brings forth uh, a better understanding and then uh, I seem to be able to quote better. And then the Lord puts people in front of me. Usually when I read something that day or that morning or a couple days before, uh, the Lord usually puts somebody in front of me and has already prepared that message for that person to be able to hear. And I can't tell you how many times that's happened. Okay, now the six articles on the second part of this study are, are the ones that we mentioned earlier in this video. So what I want you to do is as you participate, if you want to participate, go through those six articles of salvation, okay, the things that we get when we get saved. And I want you to add scripture to all six of them. Just put them down in the comments. Uh, no, there's no wrong answer, no right answer. Uh, everybody here at Brothers and Sisters in Christ, we all love you, and we're all rooting for you, okay? So this is all nothing but encouragement, all about love. There's no one going to be downing anybody here. So to go on and put your scriptures down, okay? And three, what I want you to do is I want you to start preparing a three-minute testimony, and we're going to be giving those testimonies either via uh, word and comments, or you can do it through video and post it on Facebook, uh, either however you want to do that. But the, the first objective on this week's study is I want you to take the first minute of that testimony, and that first minute is going to be what you were before Christ. In other words, I want to know about your war with the Lord before you got justified, before you got saved, okay? The second minute for the testimony is going to be one minute of you getting saved, okay? I want to know about the weeks ahead, about the weeks after. I want to know the day of what happened, how you got saved, and what all that built up to. One minute, people. Remember, 
So we're at minute number two, and then the third minute is going to be what the Lord's been doing in and through you since salvation. And what this does, it does many things. It begins to bring into the lesson your personal testimony. It helps you prepare a short testimony to be able to share with others when you run across people like your lost family, like your mom or your dad, your aunt, uncles, cousins, sisters, brothers, whatever it may be, your friends, the ones that you've been friends with uh, since you've been um, uh, out of high school, out of grade school, when you're 50 and you're 60 years old and you have not got around or you've been afraid to be able to share your faith with a close friend, okay, yeah, that gives you an opportunity to build up some encouragement to be able to share your testimony with them. And uh, your ministry on the job, yes, we all have the ministry of reconciliation, on which we just read here earlier in the scriptures. Uh, and we need to be out about the Lord's business. We are not asked, but we're commanded to go in between the highways and hedges and spread that gospel, okay? So with us having that ministry at work, there's many people there uh, that we want to share our faith with. There's people that are very open, that are Christians, that we can help love and encourage. Uh, and there's some uh, very uh, blank lost people. Uh, they're real blunt about it. They don't want to know nothing about Jesus, don't care about Jesus, don't even want you to mention the word Jesus. But that's okay because we just found out that Jesus lives in you, right? The old man went down in baptism as he was raised up. He was raised up in the likeness of Jesus, Jesus in and through you. You and Jesus are now one, and they can see Jesus living in through you. Sometimes actions are louder than words. So go ahead and put that out for me, all right? Uh, and y'all guys be praying for me, okay? I'm going through some struggles myself. Uh, I've always got them darts uh, being tossed at me from the enemy, and uh, every one of us needs to uh, be putting that body of armor on. And I'm going to be honest, sometimes I fail on that body of armor, and I don't get up and I don't put it on. And I want you to do me a favor. If you have not surrendered today, either if you've not surrendered to, to be a Christian, to place your trust in Jesus, do so. And I want you to tell everybody about it. Send us a, a private message to any of the administrators. Put it in the comments. Uh, if you know someone that has placed their trust in Jesus that you've shared this video with or others, we want to know that too, okay? Uh, and just know that I love you and know that we're praying for you. And uh, here at Brothers and Sisters in Christ, if you need anything, just reach out to us, okay? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the message today. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that this goes out. And Lord, that you'll use it to empower your kingdom, Lord. We're nothing but uh, single grains of sand on the seashore. Almighty Father, and I just pray, Lord, that you'll just uh, help these people who are listening to the message, Lord. I pray for the ones who are not encouraged, that are struggling in their faith, that love you, Lord, but just not living their life correctly. They just don't know how to uh, how to make things right, Almighty Father. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you'll just open up their eyes and touch your hearts and know, Lord, that they are saved, Almighty Father, and that you love them, Lord, and their sins are forgiven. But they just need to forgive themselves and move forward. Lord, we pray for the men who are lost. The women who are lost, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll place somebody in their life today to be able to share their faith and be able to encourage and love on them. I pray, Lord, that they'll see Jesus in and through us. Lord, thank you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, I love every one of you. Remember, if you want to participate in the study, just start commenting. I love you guys, and God bless.